Hello, everyone. My name is Elad Segev, and I'm from the Department of Communication at Tel Aviv University. And today I will show you how to conduct semantic network analysis. The idea of semantic network analysis is basically translating any given text, whether it is news items, social media posts, interview transcripts, fiction, books, films, anything that you can think of into a network of words that connect to each other. For example, here you see the translation of millions of news items into a map of country names. Each pair of countries are mentioned together in the same news item. So you could actually get the idea of the international interaction based on the international news. Semantic network analysis can help you to identify central words in the text and then to cluster them together in order to extract the meanings, the topics, the frames, the themes, everything that comes up from the text and also to detect the biases of the text. It is extremely useful to formulate theories. For example, when you don't know exactly what you're looking at and using a grounded content analysis, you try to extract the main themes that come up from the text. Whether you're doing an interview and you're looking at the transcripts and try to see what are the prevailing themes that comes up from people's answers. Or even when you're doing a literature review and you want to map the literature or the research topics related to some issue in order to identify gaps. But this is also extremely useful for testing hypotheses, whether it is in the news, social media, novels, fictions, or films, you come up with a research question and you want to understand and explore better the text in order to test the hypothesis you have. So what is the procedure? First, you prepare your corpus. You collect the data and build your corpus, sort, filter, and focus on desired samples. Second, you identify the list of words or what we call actors. Sometimes it can be specific actors like country names in the examples I showed you, or simply looking at the most frequent words in the text. You clean the final list of about 100 to 200 words based on what you think is related to your research question or your topic. Third, you generate the link list or the matrix for the network analysis, and then you analyze the network of words, looking for central words and clusters in the network. So this is the stages that we will follow through in our example. So let's start with the news database, the Nexus Uni. Here we can put any kind of uh, term, search term that we want to look at. Let's put, for example, COVID-19 vaccine in order to see what is written on this topic in different newspapers. The discourse on COVID vaccination is quite uh, provocative or debated. There are different types of issues related to this topic. And we might want to look at what is written, what are the debates, what are the issues related to this particular topic. The number of results is overwhelming and it includes a lot of different sources. We might want to limit the number of sources in order to make sense of what we have. Let's, for example, limit the timeline to the last, to the year of 2020. We could look at different types of publications, for example, only newspaper. And within this, we can also limit to a specific source. For example, let's take the New York Times. So in the New York Times, we see we have 2024 news items during 2020 that mentioned COVID-19 vaccine. Of course, we don't need to take everything. 
the results are here sorted based on relevance, which means that there is a lot of mentions for the search term COVID vaccine. Let's take the first 50 items. It's still very much information. It will help us to focus. So this is the first 10. Let's take first 20. Go to page number three. Taking the first 30, 40, and 50. Then I would just click here to download the 50 news items that I selected. Um, I would also pick here in formatting option, untick all these because I don't want this cover information only the pure information related to the text, the full documents, the first 50 in MS Word. And I can change here the file name to COVID vaccine. Once the document is downloaded, I can open it, look at the text, that's a very important stage. You look through and see what are the important articles, if it's relevant, delete the information that is uh, related to the system itself, uh, section, lengths, byline, highlights, everything that is related here, but you can also delete it later. Let's save this as a text file a regular text file, plain text. And then we can change the encoding. If it's not English, then we might want to use UTF-8. And then we have the text. And that's the first stage, we collected the text. The second stage would be to look at the frequency of the words within this text. So for that purpose, we can use the software I developed in the following link, platsegev.com slash tools and choose the first server. In this software, I built a few functions that can help you to extract the frequency of words, but also to create networks based on that. So let's upload the file. We can exclude Stop words. Here there is a list, you can add more if you want. This is automatically excluding stop words in several languages. And then when we click on calculate, we get a list of words based on their frequency. So we see here, vaccine appears 1,191 times. The word said, new, people, vaccines, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, here we need to clean the list and we cannot take everything. We have to choose about 100 words that are specific and have clear context that we can use later when we interpret the networks. So I will go to the text to network link here on the top. And here I can choose the words that I'm interested in. For example, um, since my search term was vaccine, I would not choose the word vaccine. I said is not important. It's a very general word. The word news is not important, but then the word people might be relevant. So this is a process you have to do, sometimes looking back and forth to the text itself in order to make sure that the words you choose are relevant. You could also choose not the frequent words, but words related to specific actors, politicians, issues, emotions, whatever you, you're interested in to focus. And here you can choose if you want to use the sentence as the unit of analysis or the entire paragraph. So what the system does actually now, it looks at the word people and health and see how many times it appears, 34 sentences. People and doctor appear seven times. People and trials appear 31 times, etc. And then it goes 
for each possible pair of words and create what we call a link list, which is then can be translated to a network. The link list is the actual co-occurrences of each pair of words, each possible pair of words in the text. If you use uh, social media posts like in Facebook or Twitter, then you should look at the separation based on row, which is separating each post from the other and not sentences. Once it's ready, you can either copy this to Excel or you can go to the third option, the network here, which creates a, a very brief, very preliminary network based on the first 50 links, most prevalent links here. So United States, of course, is a term. You can actually compound it to make it uh, one word. Um, trial, clinical trial, public health, healthcare, official and health, everything here is the words that appear very frequently. And then you can see the network here um, surrounded by the word people and trial and health, three very important centers in the network. But let's use a very powerful tool that I'm using uh, quite often um, to analyze the network more in depth. If you click here, the network is created. You can click here and then you can download a CSV file, comma separated value file that uh, actually looks like this, um, but it includes everything, not only the 50 words here. And then I use a different software tool called Bizone, which allows me to open CSV files and make all the necessary analysis inside it. It asks me if it's a directed network. It's not a directed network because there is no relevance to the direction here. The United States uh, clinical trial, public health, they appear in the same sentence but we don't really look at which one appears first or what is the connect direction, directional connection between them. So it should look like this, uh, the first node, the second node, the first word, second word. Uh, the ID is an automatic uh, ID number that is created by the system. And then the strings is the number of sentences that they appear together. So if it looks like this, then you can click on OK. And you see a very large ball. Um, connected strongly to one another. And we cannot really interpret this network. Uh, we can show you the, the words themselves. If we go to the attribute manager here, click on and configure, click on the V on the label, or change here to the word mode and apply. Then you, you could see the, the words. You can see that there are many words here connected to each other but we still uh, cannot really understand the structure in this network. So we'll have to delete the less frequent links in the network. I go here to the attribute manager, click on select. And in the link tab, the strings of the links, I choose first, which means 766 pairs of words appear only in one sentence at the value of one. So I can delete them with the delete button. Still very, very dense network. In this stage, we must keep a balance between a very um, dense network that is unreadable and a very simple network that has not much to say, not much information. So there is a balance here. We need to carefully check. That's, that's the totally fine. You have a spread of words. So here, we decided to keep all the pairs of words that appear at least in one, nine sentences or above. And once we have this, we can start doing all the calculations. The first calculation would be um, what is called between us. Between us is a centrality measurement that actually checks how much each word is in between other words. In the book, you will read a bit more about the different types of measurements, but between us was found to be quite um, useful measurement to detect central themes, central words in the networks. So I calculate, I analyze the between us. 
And then I can visualize the words based on their betweenness, visualize mapping the size of the node based on their betweenness. Let's make the labels a bit bigger. Right click property. And then the last stage would be to look at the clusters. So I can click on analyze and here, instead of indexing, choose grouping. The Lovain method is very useful to cluster the words together. I click here on create group node so I can easily move and manipulate the graphics of the clusters. So here you see, few clusters of words. You can try to arrange it a little bit later. So what we can see here is five different clusters telling the story of uh, the coverage of COVID-19 vaccination based on the New York Times in 2020. First, you see that there is a very big cluster here on the trial including companies like uh, Pfizer, Moderna, etc., And the result of those trials um, based on people groups, placebo and numbers here related to the cases. So the trials and the situation, but also the spread of the virus, uh, particularly among children and the question of immunity, positive tests and so, so, et cetera. So, most of these themes are relatively descriptive. Uh, the New York Times tries to portray a story about how, how does it go and, and particularly from a scientific point of view. There is here the government uh, officials and health ministers um, in the States, but also around the world. And there is hardly, but still something that might um, imply that there is a criticism or voices against the word against here is something that you might want to look closely in the text and see how it appears. Uh, and the effectiveness and the safety issues, all those words are maybe related to a question in the process. But the New York Times seems to be relatively positive if you look at those maps and uh, more descriptive in terms of how, how it uh, covered the thing, not as a debated issue, but more as a given um, process that uh, the United States and the world is going through. So that what was the semantic network analysis of this topic. Of course, you can keep on looking at the text and that's something you should do uh, look at interesting words here and try to make sense of them. Use it as a map. I like to see it as an X-ray of text that can help you to go further and look at the content uh, in different levels, qualitative and quantitative levels. So this is basically the process of semantic network analysis. If you want to read more, please look at the book, Semantic Network Analysis in Social Sciences, and the paper, Textual Network Analysis, How to Detect Prevailing Themes and Biases in International News and Social Media. And of course, feel free to use my software and write me your comments about it. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.